I had an amazing time touring the space with Victoria. I found another amazing individual. Hi, Rue Williams. Rue Williams. I didn't yeah. know your last name was Williams. You didn't know that? That's my last name. Is it actually? Oh, can. They ain't no way. So Rue, what do yes. you do here with Prue? Resilience Lab. So I'm the environmental justice coordinator. So I look at how the pollution in this area, you know, Victoria went over this with you, how uh, the Elizabeth River has been historically polluted to the, such an extent that it was considered dead. Yeah. So a lot of the pollution from that, if not the majority of it, if not all, comes from the high militarization in this area, very much a lot of industry. Mm. Um, and most of that industry, most of that militarization and the resulting pollution disproportionately impact the lower income communities here. Hampton Roads area is actually interesting in that it's predominantly black. You don't typically see that, um, just like predominantly black areas, um, especially like around here necessarily. Most of that pollution is affecting those black communities, lower income communities, and just people of color in general. Right. Um, you look at Portsmouth, which has multiple super fun sites mm -hmm. in just like a small city again disproportionately impacting those black residents and so that's what i look at i look at ways in which we can engage those communities yeah. in our discourse in our environmental actions in our restoration projects because they are the ones suffering the brunt of these issues right. so they should be at the forefront of the discussions you know what I'm and i appreciate the kind of work that you're doing i started namarama just purely around like a hobby and local love and things of that nature right. and it's gotten progressively bigger, if you will, recognizing mm -hmm. the importance of representation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, being a black man in this space yeah. and having black children in this yeah. space and recognizing that there are so many different things that are at play and at work that we aren't invited to those spaces. Yep. We are taught that we don't do those types of things. Yeah. So then to get back to, or to, to learn more about organizations like mm -hmm. the Elizabeth Road Project and, and go to spaces like uh, Paris Street Park, mm -hmm. like no kayak, mm -hmm. or come here and learn about the river. What are things that get you um, excited or jazzed up about this particular center in general? One of the things that really drew me to the Elizabeth River Project in general is the environmental justice field, while not new, is definitely new in that like, basing it off like ink like a job like right. getting money from it essentially yeah. is new okay. the field itself is not new but having it as like an actual job is a new thing okay. and so because the field is new and growing um organizations are still kind of learning the ropes of how to have environmental justice managers and environmental justice coordinators mm -hmm. a lot of organizations with a lot of you know dei initiatives a lot of it's just lip service right. you know they just want you know the token stuff right so it was hard for me to look for organizations that were actually serious about what they were saying and not just like you know blowing smoke if you right. will. No, it's fair. And one of the things I really liked about ERP when I first, you know, did my interviews was it was very evident to me from the jump that they not only just valued DEI, but they were very strategic about it. And this is actually why I decided to interview and, and um, eventually accept the job was I asked them what environmental justice initiatives they're doing. Mm. And um, they said, yeah, like we have one of the projects that we're trying to incorporate more green space in a specific area. I forgot specifically. But the reason why I liked it is because they said that one of our concerns is by including a green space, we're worried that it will actually welcome gentrification because the moment you put a green space somewhere, the property values are going up, people yeah. are going to start being interested. So even though that seems like kind of like a, you know, okay, well, go thing, it showed to me that there was actual intention with their work yeah and it showed to me that they were actually thinking yeah. and like they were there it was a long-term goal not just right. like a we want to plant a green space because it want we want it to make a like feel good about ourselves right. it was we want to plant a green space and we want it to be a long-lasting thing and in order to do that we have to think about the long-term repercussions and implications yeah. i really like that a lot and I, I think what draws me to this place like you know, on that note is the fact that there's a lot of intention here. There's a lot of passion here yeah. and the passion isn't fake. The passion is genuine. The passion is to actually include these communities and you're actually seeing that being done. Yeah. You know, you're seeing the engagement, you're seeing the discourse happening. I mean, of, of course, there's still a lot of work to be done, For sure. you know, as there always is, but I think they're doing things that a lot of organizations are not. So let's talk about that. One, yeah. one of my questions were some of the things that you've seen or you'd like to see have happened, yeah. or have happened in this particular yeah, organization. for sure. One of the things that like I like about here specifically is the fact that they, so I just started, but they're already giving me so much leeway to be able to do things, Yeah, you know, and what I think is really important about that is with social justice and environmental justice and things of that nature, it's not about the degrees. You, you, you don't really, <laughs> you don't need a PhD in organizing. It's mm -hmm. experience, it's connection with the community. So if you have that, you have yeah. that. Yeah. And being able to just, I just started and I'm already making partnerships with a lot of black organizations here. Yeah. I mentioned earlier the one in Portsmouth that specifically focuses on like young black men in the area who, you know, are impacted by gang violence and drugs and whatnot and finding a way to get them out of those environments and 
provide them more alternatives and opportunities. Yeah. Like to be able to make those partnerships, to be able to talk to these people, you know, like you guys were talking about Paradise Creek Park, you already went, Mm -hmm. um, being able to bring these, you know, young men and young women and these kids who are from these historically disenfranchised intergenerational trauma legacies and households, being able to bring them to these areas and be like, yo, this is for you just as much as it is for affluent white people. You know what I'm saying? Um, and being able to do that, like I've already been three weeks in and I'm already doing that. Love it. Um, I'm already like making these partnerships with these people and you know, these young kids. Um, there's an organization in Southside called Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. And I've already started talking to them about like Dope. I was you know, a boys and girls I was a boys and girls club kid growing up. Were you really? I was. You should okay, yeah. actually side note, you should look them up. Southside yeah. Boys and Girls Club are really yeah. cool because a lot of the work they do is very similar to cuts, mm-hmm. but it's also focused very much on like younger kids, yeah. a lot of mental health because it's focused on trauma. Mm-hmm. A lot of kids like either grew up in gangs, know someone in a gang, have been shot, know somebody who's been mm-hmm. shot. It's a lot of trauma in black communities. Um and they're working so much on trying to, again, like heal that. Yeah. And it's also food desert. So they're thinking about getting farmer's markets. And yeah. we're all trying to help with that. We're all trying to help with getting the farmer's markets in. Landscaping is a big mm-hmm. thing we're doing. On my end, I'm trying to make sure that these organizations and these people and even these kids are like directly involved in this. Yeah, no doubt. Like yeah. bridging that gap. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and to be able to have that like leeway so early on is something I think more organizations should have. I think a lot of organizations are very much in the interest of like, we're going to go into the community. We're going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you what's wrong. And we're going to tell you how to fix that. And then we're going to leave without talking to the community. Right. Exactly. It's very much saviorism. It's very much. I like to feel like I'm God type beat rather than actually, you know, caring about the community. So I really like that. Our thing is we go into the community. We say, what are the issues you have? That's the only question we ask. Yeah. The rest is listening. Yes. The rest is taking notes. Yes. The rest is coming back to the organization and being like, these are their concerns. How can we help them? Yes. Not how can we save them. Right. How can we help them? And what ways can we involve them in a way in which all of their voices are heard or at the forefront every single step of the way? We're Amplified. just we're just like yes. the stage yeah. or like the fountain, like trying to like, you know, lift them up. You know, the mic is theirs. It's like it's important to hear you say those types of things, especially like when you start a new job. Yeah. It's one thing to have all these ideas of what you can potentially do with the new organization, mm-hmm. but to see it actually taking shape. Exactly. And it's not just lip service. Exactly. It's not just, well, we're gonna say this to you so you come work with us. Right. And then, you start a new job and it falls flat. Right. I'm glad to hear because I've always been a fan of the ERP. Yeah. I wasn't really sure of all the initiatives and what the things that they were doing, but I was always a fan of it. And to yeah. hear that they had this position open yeah. and to see somebody like yourself in that position yeah. is very cool to see. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's very I appreciate cool it. to see. To I appreciate be honest. it. Yeah. No, yeah, I appreciate that. So another thing about um ERP that I like a lot as well is they partner a lot with NSU, which is you know mm-hmm. historically HBCU. And there are some NSU interns here. Yep. Um love them so much yeah and when i first started working here one of them came up to me and they were like um listen bro like you have no idea how happy it makes me to see you here and i was like oh my god (laughs) but at the same time when you're black and in a space that's predominantly white of course you're going to have reservations of course you're going to feel out of place especially in like situations like these or we're specifically talking about injustices so my they were like yeah like it's just good to see another person of color here a black person here and one that's in this particular position doing this type of thing and they said to me it's like it's nice to be able to see yourself in these spaces not because you know just because of that but it also says to you that i can do that you know like i can do that i can be in that position and I can, you know, inspire the change that I want to see Bingo. by seeing you in there as well. Bingo. And that was like, oh, like, I was like, don't make me emotional on my first day. <laughs> <laughs> don't play. So like, it was, it was, it was like low key the, I wouldn't say validation. It was the assurance I needed yeah. because it was like, especially I, I say this quite often and I will always say it because it's important to say, mm. I will never deny that I come from an immense place of privilege on many levels, mm. whether it be socioeconomically, you know, the, the fact that my parents, you know, help me a lot with things, like provide a lot for me. Um, even like the extent of like colorism, like I'm light skinned. You know, there are a lot of things that like I have privilege that a lot of black people do not. You know, a lot of the, the, the kids that grow up in Portsmouth go through, have experiences that I've never had. And so to say I relate to them on every level is disingenuous and it's false because yes, we I am black and I care about my people tremendously. That's right. why I go into this field and why I always talk about it. But that at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that I'm so well versed in the black experience because the black experience is incredibly diverse as we are, so vast. you know, and so yeah. vast. You know what I'm saying? So I it, sometimes I feel like a little like, ooh, like I, I feel as though a little bit of imposter syndrome because I'm like, I sit, I'm sitting here telling, you know, these things, talking about these black communities. 
And meanwhile, you know, I, I come from the place that I do. But to be able to hear, you know, another black person say like, bro, like at the end of the day, like you are a black person that cares about your community and it's doing rather than just sitting there and basking in your privilege if you yeah. will i guess you're actually out and about doing things because you care that i was just gonna say yeah. because you care yeah and like you, yeah you yeah and you <laughs> you are black yeah. and we love you and we're happy that you're here and we're ecstatic that you're here and we're glad you're doing the work that you're doing because if you're not going to do it who's going to do it so um yeah i don't know no, and That's I do, you do know, and I think it's important for you to say these types of things because, again, to recognize, like, your privileges. Yeah. Because you can, you can articulate and recognize your privileges and recognize that you're, you, you're a black individual, but your experience is not the same as every black person. Right. And then, again, growing up to hear so often from myself personally, black folks just don't do that. Yeah. Well, maybe that set of black folks don't do that. Right. But this black guy does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to be that example for other people yeah. that are out there. Right. And I think it also begs the question, like, why do those black folks? not do that mm -hmm. and why am i able to do that? right that's another right. question i i like i think that's part of the reason why i wanted to go into this field in particular too especially on the privilege aspect is because i've always been able to have the privilege of enjoying the outdoors yeah. now is that partly because i'm jamaican yes mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. just like we're, we're jamaicans like our country is the outdoors yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But like at the same time, I also recognize that I've always been in spaces in which the outdoors were accessible okay. because of where I come from. Okay. And, it's, and it's like also a lot of black people, like we were talking about before, these traditionally quote unquote white spaces, yeah. you know, like, why is it that you feel that way? Well, you look at the history of, you know, the United States and being deprived, redlining, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Gentrification, you yep. know what I'm saying? So it's, it's for me, it's always like the question of like, why is it that you don't do that? Why is it that, is that you feel like you can't do that? Who's told you that and why? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's really inspired this work. Because nine times out of ten, it's not because they don't want to. It's because they can't. They're yeah. not able to. They're denied it in such and such. Yeah. In so many ways. Not just like in the environment. Yeah. Think about education. You know, like that's a big thing. Housing. There's so many layers. There's so many layers. So many Rue, thank you so much for your time. Oh, sure. Thank you for being here in this position. I appreciate you. I look you. forward to the things that you're able to materialize and accomplish with this organization. You're going to do some great things. I appreciate you. You're going to do some great things. I appreciate things. you. I appreciate you, Bestie. Right. I appreciate you. Let's go. Thank Let's you go. so much. All right, y'all. And on that note, we out. <laughs>